In the previous videos, we've learned the basics of printing requirements and test together with the rest of your software project in Jira. Let's dive deeper into setting up the quality assurance process and making it feature team right inside the Atlassian suite. In software development, testing is perceived as a part between coding and deployment. Quality assurance, though, covers the whole process and takes part in every stage from requirements to release. It requires collaboration with all the project participants, managers, developers, analysts and testers. The QA work begins with defining the quality standard, which again is connected to everything from the product specification to the final build. A particular implementation depends heavily on the project approach. Let's take a look at a couple of basic concepts. The waterfall model requires that every consecutive step stems from the previous one. The whole process may take slightly longer, as each phase must be completed before the next one can start. The impact of possible errors is very strong. If something goes wrong during one stage, the whole team has to go back and fix it. So how exactly does it work for quality assurance? We start from business analysis and consultations with the stakeholders. As an effect, we should establish a collection of requirements for the final product. Then the team can move on to design and implementation. The QA engineers move the process forward to test planning, execution and reporting. The developers often have to go back and correct the errors after the testing phase then we can finally release the product or deploy it to the customer's environment. In the maintenance stage, we keep fixing bugs and releasing new smaller versions. The waterfall method is considered successful for low-risk projects. The agile approach is picked even for the most complex software. In this method, the development process is split into smaller but more frequent releases. This helps speed up the project and maintain quality. We can implement the customer's request faster and fix the bugs in each iteration. But this approach isn't flawless too. Working in short loops, we risk losing sight of the project goal and extending the budget. Looking at the Agile testing pyramid, we can see the inverted proportions against conventional manual testing. In the traditional approach, end-to-end -end testing takes up to 90% of the whole process. Here, workflow tests through the UI take no more than 10% of the team's time. Accordingly, unit tests that were on the top of the pyramid became the core of the Agile model responsible for about 80% of the whole process. Another common software development cycle is the spiral model. It stands alone with its approach to the requirements. The team's work doesn't have to be stuck if the specification isn't fully complete. We can use the spiral method that goes in extended loops. Each loop stands for a single iteration and the number of loops depends on the project's complexity. The more advanced the development becomes, the longer it takes to complete an iteration. The team gathers or updates the requirements as long as they are sufficient to the current version. When it comes to testing, each cycle goes through the whole process from analysis to execution and reporting. New requirements and features lead to creating new test cases and updating the test plan to ensure requirements and code coverage. These models have been used for years. However, they all have one weakness in common, the lack of focus on the actual quality. The bugs are often detected during later stages, which leads to repeating the whole process. A couple of modern approaches appear to address this. They put quality checks on each phase from gathering the requirements until final deployment. Finding bugs in the specification supports the developers in creating better code, which in turn saves the time of the testing team. Shift-left testing is a good example. This model mandates engaging the testing team into the project from the very beginning. They test not just the code, but the designs and requirements as well, so they can detect issues as quickly as possible. As a result, small bugs don't escalate into major problems. Before shift-left testing was introduced, the emphasis on testing was highest when the development ended. Now, this proportion goes into reverse. This way, the problems can be uncovered much faster and cheaper. The development team knows about the possible issues even before they start coding. Testers' participation in a whole life cycle allows them to understand the requirements early on and help shaping them by asking the right questions. In this approach, testing doesn't end right after development's over, but continues hand-in-hand -hand with consecutive steps. In order to maintain effects, the teams have to work together closely and exchange the results of their work. Continuous testing originated as a DevOps concept 
It brings testing to the level when it's automated throughout all the development process. The goal of this approach is to test as frequently as it's necessary to support faster delivery with fewer bugs. It requires designing the whole chain at once rather than single unit tests, which also incorporates scripted code integration and automatic builds. Implementing automated tests in the CI-CD cycle allows for testing at regular intervals with every new code iteration, without the possibility of adding new bugs manually. Other benefits include seamless integration with the DevOps process, connecting different development stages and improving security. Now let's get to practice. Adjusting a software development model to your project is important, but the right tool will do the rest of the magic. Project management tools such as Atlas and Jira can be tailored to your QA team, no matter if you work in Waterfall, Agile, or anything in between. You may be wondering, why use Jira for quality assurance when it's not a dedicated testing tool? Well, when we work in Jira software, reading the testing project into the existing toolset would benefit the whole team. Keeping all the work in one place prevents human errors and makes communication easier. Business analysts, testers and developers can share documents and exchange opinions using the Atlassian platform. Luckily, Jira software has the features that allow us to model almost every kind of QA process. We can build structures of different issue types, set up customized workflows, plan the team's work and track its progress. Linking issues between each other and with Confluence pages can ensure end-to-end -end traceability. We can also create custom reporting dashboards that will refresh in real time. Let's take a brief look at how it works. Jira admins have permission to create customized Jira issue types. They can design one or a couple related to requirements inside your software project or even create a dedicated repo. We'll be able to define the title, description, priority and an assigned reviewer for each issue and organize them with labels and components. In the workflow editor, they can create statuses for tracking changes, performing analysis and covering the test cases. The most popular way of setting up Jira for tests is by using epics as test plans, stories as test cases and adding subtasks for particular test runs. This concept is quite easy to understand and doesn't require much knowledge about the system. All we have to do is create a test case and list the steps in its description. After we create a test case, we can link it to a related requirement to ensure traceability and coverage. The same goes for the facts that arise from the test runs. However, using standalone Jira for quality assurance comes with functional limitations. There is a better way to bring testing into Jira. We can use a fully integrated app from the Atlassian Marketplace. One of them is Requirements and Test Management for Jira, RTM in short, which is known for its simplicity and plug-and-play configuration. RTM for Jira allows us to analyze requirements, write test cases, design test plans and execute them, and report the test results. This way, the whole team works in the same context and shares information from initial analysis to release in the feature. This allows different teams on the project to collaborate efficiently. The app uses a tree-folder structure for organizing all kinds of objects. The relations between issues are displayed in a couple of places in the app, as well as on the test reports. This allows us to navigate faster and check requirement coverage in a couple of clicks. Implementing shift left testing and supporting Agile teams has never been easier. Now on to a more detailed demo. The first app module we encounter is the requirements. We can choose from one of the four predefined issue types or customize them during configuring the project. Fill in the fields to describe the requirements details, the more the better. The links inside the tree are created and updated automatically, which helps with uncovering dependencies. The next step is creating test cases. Describe the steps with preconditions and actions to take. This panel is fully customizable, so we can rename and define the columns, as well as drag and drop elements. At this point, we can also link a test case to related requirements. When we have a set of test cases, we connect them to a test plan. In RGM, test plans are re-executable and each test case can be executed separately on the test cases tab. This is especially useful for retesting, regression or cross-environment testing. On the test execution view, the multicolored progress bar shows the current information about completed test cases. We can open the details and check the results, assignees and priority of each test case. 
When we find a failed step or test case, we should report what went wrong. We can add attachments and comments to let the developers know about the details of an error. Then we create a linked effect right from the test execution screen. The app also includes a couple of very useful reports. We can check the test plan or test case execution progress on the user dashboard, the traceability metrics and the requirement coverage report give us a bird's eye view on connections between the issues. Testing in Jira can be also much easier with a fully customizable tool integrated right into the issue view. TestFlow for Jira is the most flexible test management app, which more advanced users will definitely appreciate. TestFlow aims at modeling complex testing workflows and processes. It finds a great use in highly regulated industries as well as in enterprise-level companies working on IT projects. With RTM for Jira, we get a ready-to-use QA process that can evolve over time. TestFlow allows us to create and manage our own customized workflow right from the start. Using native Jira functionalities helps fulfill the most excessive demands of the team. Even though requirements management isn't available out of the box, we can integrate an already existing process with this app. TestFlow gives us great freedom in terms of project setup. We can create a single project for the whole team, separate requirements and tests, or create a single test repository for all your software projects. Inside a single project, we basically follow an already familiar structure. A test plan is on the epic or story level, and it aggregates test cases as its subtasks. Other issue types can stand for requirements or development issues in the project. A test case template is a reusable object from which we can create test cases to execute. Both contain test steps on the issue view, although the execution part and step statuses are visible only on the executable test case. The real power of TestFlow is hidden in Jira workflows. Advanced conditions, validators and post functions can be used to build an efficient quality assurance process. These features help us streamline the team's work with the issues. We can use them to automatically approve test cases inside of a test plan or change the statuses of test steps in a couple of clicks. This is an example of a configured requirement view. On the coverage panel, we can check the already created test case templates with their statuses. If we need to create more, we can simply click on the menu and select the Create the test case template operation. The tool will automatically create a connection between these objects. With the test repository, we can easily organize tests in Jira. This view is accessible from the project sidebar and contains all the test case templates from a given project or the whole instance. The folders called All and Uncategorized are present by default and the rest is up to us. We can create a multi-level folder structure that suits our needs best. Basic and advanced searching or filtering are available as well. Straight from this view, we can create a new test plan. One option is to create a test plan with group TCs, which reads test case groups based on subfolder names. Another is just setting a test plan based on the current folder content. On the test plan view, we can estimate the effort needed for its completion, set the order of testing and many more. The execution in iterations is possible as well. When setting the next iteration, we have four options for choosing test cases, three automatic and one manual. The test case view contains the test steps, preconditions and information about the testing process. Simply click the test button to start the execution. Just like in RTM for Jira, we can add comments, upload attachments and create effects right from the test steps. We can set up the app so that changing the status of a test step group or the whole test case will cause all the related steps to follow, which means much less clicking. TestFlow is also capable of executing automated tests without leaving Jira. The test automation module lets you trigger CI server tests and send the results back to Jira when they are completed. The app creates new test cases for CI jobs or updates existing ones. This basically enables continuous testing triggered from Jira software. Finally, talking about TestFlow wouldn't be complete without mentioning the reports. The tool provides us with dedicated reports, issue view panels and dashboard gadgets. With their help, we can check requirement coverage, test plan progress per iteration and get real-time information about what's going on in the project. The app allows getting as granular as particular test step statuses. Let's sum up quickly. Quality assurance is much wider than the testing itself. 
It's a proactive process that requires not only a dedicated tool, but also a well thought out strategy and a tailored approach depending on the project character. In order to succeed, we should think about testing as an endless process, not just one of the cogs in the large SDLC machine. As we already know from the previous videos, the sooner we find the facts, the lower costs will defray. Technology allows us to choose between different kinds of approaches to quality, from classic to fully automated. No matter what we choose though, implementing quality checks on each step from specifications to deployment builds is a must-have in modern software development. Working in Jira during the whole lifecycle gives the opportunity to track the team's work from start to finish. If you already use Jira software somewhere on the project, introducing your QA team to the tool promotes greater integration and clarity because all the issues can be clearly defined and connected with each other. Using a single platform makes it easier to spot and track all the possible issues. Finally, compared to other tools designed exclusively for test management, Jira turns out to be a surprisingly economic choice. When it comes to choosing a test management app, we go with a pre-configured or a customized one. The choice depends on our project's character and our team's expectations, while RTM for Jira is ready to use from the start and well adjusted to agile or smaller teams. TestFlow is perfectly suited for large-scale DevOps testing, highly regulated industries and building advanced workflows. We actually dogfood both these apps in our own teams. Here's what their creators say about it. We test our app by ourselves. We do that to immediately know what we are missing, what the problems are, and quickly spot bugs. Each bug must be assigned to a test case, even if it's closely related. Our goal is to make sure that no bugs are ever lost. That's right, by using our products in-house, we can receive feedback much faster and empathize with our customers and also quickly assess the value of feature suggestions that we receive through our support channel. In the next video, we'll focus on test execution and automation in Jira. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel and don't miss it.